Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk, those who are watching here live, and also those who are watching on Facebook and also YouTube. I want to make sure that you guys remember that those are two platforms that you can utilize to communicate with us and also share, share the video. We want to make sure that this information gets out because this is very important to our daily lives and also our business. Here at Executive Talk, our, our job is to make sure that you understand the spiritual aspect of your business and your day-to-day, -day, not just your business, because the business is secondary, but your spiritual life, it means everything. So this is what we're addressing, so I wanna make sure that you understand if you're a first-time watcher as to what you're watching. We're coming off of a, our first particular series called Change the Character to Find Success. In that series, you're gonna find a lot of powerful information to actually help you out to, to talk about character. And in this show, we're continue on, the, continuing on a, a couple of portions from that show to actually keep the conversation going. So again, make sure that you're able to comment and that way we'll go ahead and answer your questions and we'll respond to you and keep the conversation going. But let's go ahead and jump into today's topic and what is it? Today's topic is, being, is on purpose. What is on purpose? That sounds like a very simple, very straightforward conversation. But how often are we actually on purpose to understand that we're on purpose in everything that we're doing? We're going to go ahead and address some things that may hit a couple of personal areas in your life. Because this is actually one of the most touchiest subjects that, that, we, that we've talked about year to date. Because this, this, is a, this is a place that is pretty unknown. It goes on scene. You don't really feel it. It's kind of like an odorless chemical. You don't really know that it's there until you actually look at it, but then you have a way of changing your atmosphere. But that was, that's what we're going to address. So what I ask of you is to ensure that your heart is open. Make sure that your heart is open to, to really look within because only these messages are only going to penetrate if your, your heart is open. So let's talk about it. I'm going to take you back to um, our parents. Maybe you're a parent right now, so maybe you can really associate with what's going on. But let's talk about our parents. Let's talk about, so when we talk about our parents, we're actually really talking about our childhood. If you look at the history of executive talk in our shows, we do have a history of going backwards to go, in order to go forward. Because that's really the component as to where you're gonna find out the issue and find out where you can make the most, the biggest impact. Well, let's think about our parents. Our father and mother met at some point they really liked each other, they fell in love. And you know, it's one of those things that in general, at the day and at the time and place that they fell in love, they had a general consensus or an idea as to what their purpose was personally. You know, it's one of those things that in the conversation just jived and got each other going like, wow, I love your purpose, I love where you're trying to go with life and vice versa. So this conversation, meshed, it made sense. It really helped solidify this relationship, okay? When these two got together, you know how it is in the dating scene and in this, in this marriage scene and so on and so forth, it actually starts to build, okay? These emotions start to build. You kind of forget that conversation of what each other's purpose was. And unfortunately, when this conversation did happen, were they talking in ideas? These are what they like to do or what they are doing? because there's a difference. Because if this is something that they are currently doing, there's a different driving force. But if the conversation is, these are some of the things I like to achieve in my life, or this is what I feel like my purpose is, well then, there's something that's not co quite complete yet. Let's take it to the next phase. Here you come along, our childhood, okay? So that becomes part of the purpose. See, one thing about people is that when you uh, get married when you find your significant other it actually gives you another reason as to why you're living and what you're living for kids absolutely amplify that reason which is amazing which is how it's supposed to be but also what we still have an issue of is there's an unconfirmed purpose in each of the father and mother's uh, personal lives there's still a struggle there you don't talk about it you don't constantly month after month come to the kitchen table and say, okay, so how are you doing on that purpose thing? Is it working for you yet? Have you found it? 
Okay, you don't have that type of conversation. Normally you just keep on going on with work and you're like, well, we've been together long enough. It's time for us to go ahead and have some kids. Okay, so fine, here you come. And your whole life, as soon as you're born, is all about purpose. See, the thing is, this thing can get convoluted in the, in the marriage because all that purpose becomes um, making sure that you become a nice and adult, which is amazing, which is awesome. And it is a good purpose. But also, there's a seeking there of, why are you here? There's still that question as to why am I here, besides the fact of you want it to, to have or that you're wanting to be here from your parents. What is the difference in that? Okay, so you're, you're here on purpose based on your father and mother's relationship and what they were seeking, but then what is your purpose? Why were you the only one selected out of, and we'll get into that in the other show, but why were you the one here? So that becomes the biggest question of your life. Now, as we probably alluded to in a lot of our other shows, we take you, you know, your parents take you to sports, you try to get you into this club, trying to get you involved in this, trying to get you involved in that. And the central focus is, why is this kid here? So have you noticed that all three parties are still operating with this question of purpose? See, the thing is, you can still operate with that question of purpose, but you can still, you can still grow around it. See, life has a way of making, because it's not like you're stuck. It's not like I'm not leaving the house until I find out what my purpose is. No, you just start, uh, you just keep moving on. And as you keep moving on, life just gets more and more. You keep on consuming a little bit more and more. So then, as a childhood, you become 18 and now you're an adult and now you're still in that place of looking for purpose. And it's hard to actually look for something and not know where, not where you're looking for. This becomes a resounding place in your life. Now, John 3, 5 through 7 says, Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and the spirit. Okay? Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. But you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Okay. This is a loaded scripture. Okay, a lot of us have been baptized before, and this is where the baptism, and based on that baptism, this is where probably a lot of it is coming from. But what I want you to pay attention to is this flesh gives birth to flesh. So you're born of the flesh. No matter how spiritual you are, you're born of the flesh. And so when you're born of the flesh, there is part of you that there is, there's something incomplete because you have not yet been, been born of the Spirit, okay? So again, it says you must be born again. It's, it's not a, well, you probably should, and it would be a good idea if you do. It's you must be born again. And that's that relationship with the Spirit. But if you're born of the flesh, you're operating in something that's outside of you, okay? Because again, the flesh has a way of presenting a lifestyle for yourself. John 10.10, 10, as you guys have known, again, for the, for the first time viewers, we'll come across this quite often because we do, actually, we do need to understand how this enemy comes to only steal, kill, and destroy. How does that work? How is he attacking our lives? I can't see him. I can't feel him. Okay? And you probably have the same, same challenge when it comes to the Lord. Okay? But let's talk about the enemy for a minute here and talk about how he steals and kills and destroys this lack of purpose. Because this is very alluring to the enemy, and this is why this, this topic is so deep, and I want you to open up your hearts and maintain that. The enemy loves the fact that we are born of the flesh and loves the fact that we're searching for purpose. He absolutely has the love for mankind based on this fact right here. Because when you have this issue, when you have this issue of non-purpose, you're going to run into a lot of challenges along the way because you're fighting for something. You don't know what you're fighting for, but you're fighting for something that you're missing. But the enemy loves the fact that you're operating in the flesh because that's where he can distract you from looking for this purpose. 
in our latter shows, you, get, you will understand why this is so key. We'll come back to this. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it reads, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, imp impurity, and debunkery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Now, why are those so heavy? Why are we even talking about that? How does that even come to the fact? Because if, if you're born of the flesh, and the enemy loves the fact that we're born of the flesh, and we're searching for purpose, these, are, these become the issues that we have in our lives. These, have, these feelings and these, these acts, these actions, become a distraction for our purpose. So when we talk about sexual immorality, let's talk about idolatry, let's talk about jealousy, fits of rage. Have you ever had those before? Do you have a, a challenge with selfish ambition? Has any of those ever hit you? If you say no, we have a question. I have a question to answer you, ask you. Because absolutely you know you, we've all had some issues with at least one of these, if not maybe three or four. Okay? It's very easy to have an issue with one of these. Just go in traffic. Go on I-25 for those who live in Denver. Yeah, I bet you have a fit, fit, fits of rage for a minute there. I bet you have selfish ambition when you're trying to get to your location. It does not take much for you to be operating in these. So this is why the enemy understands how we're born. He understands the fact that we have this big question. And this is one of those things that purpose has to be taught. It has to be taught. And you'll understand again in these future shows. But again, these are where he wants to go. But when you ask him, James 1, 6 through 8, and this is, this is us asking, asking the Lord and getting communication with him. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such persons should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Okay, what's going on with this particular topic here? Let's take a look at it. It says, do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as the wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Do you know how easy it is? Do you know how easy it is to be unsettled when you don't have purpose, nothing concrete? So that means you're always constantly wavering. When you're operating from the flesh, there's a part of you because the purpose actually secures a person. But without that purpose, without understanding, you, you start to waver. And you're divided. You have divided loyalty. Okay? And you're unsettled. There's an unsettled feeling that you're constantly operating with as a person. And this is, again, this is the thick of understanding purpose. Such a person, such a person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Okay, so there's a relationship barrier also because of these actions that the person is operating from because this lack of faith, okay, this struggle because you're trying to figure out what your purpose is, it's hard to develop that relationship with the Lord, you are seeing the end result of that person in the constant daily struggle. So when we talk about the enemy and we talk about why he loves us, the fact that we're born in the flesh is because there's scripturally places that he can take us and have us have a constant feeling of unsettledness. This keeps us separated from our faith. James 1, 6 through 8, their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unable in everything they do. So earlier in the show, as I, in the presentation, I talked about character. Because that's what the show that we're coming off of. And this is a, the constant conversation that we're always in, is character. Now, have you ever met a person who's unstable in everything that they do? I want you to think for a minute. And if that person happens to be, well, maybe you, think about that. Because I know, I know how it is. Whenever somebody asks you, have you ever thought of a person? You think about 20 different people that you met or that you know of that, oh yeah, I know, that person and that person, oh yeah, that, definitely that person over there. But we never say, 
I'm unstable. I want you to think about that for a minute. Are you stuck in this moment right here? Because if you are, there's a challenge there. This is part of what we're addressing right now. That's again why I'm asking you to open up your heart to this message so we can so you can open that door because there might be a hidden door that's on scene in there that we need to recognize. When you haven't solidified your purpose in this world, by default, you start to become hurtful. Now, whoa, Maurice, now you're getting real personal. I know, I know. I apologize, but this is the message I was given to give out. By default, you become hurtful. Have you ever been in the wrong place and met the wrong person? You know, those things happen and you, you, you've created something that shouldn't have been created. Because of the lack of purpose, purpose, because you weren't solidified in that purpose, you became hurtful for that experience. Just because somebody hurt you doesn't mean you weren't there. Think about that. Just because somebody hurt you doesn't mean you weren't there. You're still accountable for the circumstance. Because this becomes, because you find yourself in a lot of predicaments, and again, the enemy loves the fact that you're born in the flesh. The enemy loves the fact that you're not on purpose and that you don't know yet. Because I'm going to drive you into places that are going to hurt you even further. Because again, why, if I was the enemy and I'm trying to keep you away from God, why would I try to ensure that, you're, that you feel healthy? No, I'm trying to tear you apart. That's how that stuff happens. So then, again, once you're in the wrong circumstance and you start doing the wrong stuff, this, per this lack of purpose puts you in hurtful situations and you become hurtful as well. You become bitter with people. You start to not like them. And then you say, I'm going to get them, I call it street justice. I'm going to get them before they get me. Your pain of not knowing your purpose becomes somebody else's reality. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and say, hey, you know, uh, John over there, oh, John, oh, no, mm-mm, not John. <laughs> no, don't, don't, ooh, whatever you do, don't talk to John. Okay, John, if you're watching, I'm not talking about you directly, I don't even know you, it's not personal, it just happens to be the name. So, it becomes somebody else's reality. The fact that they reacted in that way, it became their reality based on the interaction that they had with you. Were you at your best at that moment in time? If not, that hurtful, you left a, you left a mark on them. They felt something from you. And one thing that we have yet to really come to conclusion on and understanding is how impactful we are as people. Just the fact that you don't feel, that you may not feel that you're impactful, is telling me that we're not understanding our purpose and how potent we are. My interaction with you, have you ever met somebody and then three months later you thought about them randomly? Now, Maurice, I think about a whole bunch of stuff. Exactly, because stuff hit, penetrates your heart first and it hits your mind. Every interaction, there's something, you remember something about that person every single interaction. You may not remember exactly what they said, but you remember the feeling that you had when you're around that person, okay? So we, are, we have some impact. There's a lack of accountability. You realize that if I don't have any purpose and I'm struggling with that, I'm gonna be in a place where, you know what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I just did it, you know. I, I'm certain, because I've said it before. I've done stuff in my past, and I've even, maybe even a couple of months ago where I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever, it'll be fine. Well, I didn't realize that there, there, in that statement, there's a lack of accountability. There's part of that because I leave an impact that it does matter. It does hit. It will show up at some point. Have you ever had to go back and apologize for something? It does matter. But in, in, my, in my world of lack of purpose, I find myself doing a lot of things I had to apologize for because I had no accountability. I had nothing to, to hover around me. In this place of 
of lack of purpose. You still have character, but see, the enemy has a way of creating a temporary character that you, that you start to operate from. So, again, because nobody, he's not going to leave you just empty without the feeling of. Because if you at least have the feeling of, you still stay committed to it. Okay? The enemy's not going to say, well, I have, you know, you have no character. Well, you have empty character based on the fact that you're struggling, but you still have a level of it. And it's all temporary because you're operating from where? From the flesh. You, become, you start to become very selfish in your day-to-day. -day. If you're not on purpose with how you do things, you become very selfish. It's just part of what you have. Again, what are the acts of the flesh? Is selfish ambition not act of the flesh? So again, you can, get, you can say, well, no, that's not how I am. Have you ever had selfish ambition? You have, we have a level of selfishness in our flesh. That's where selfishness actually comes from. Decision making is always temporary. All your decisions that you foresee and that you're actually operating with and that you're trying to move forward with, they're always temporary. They're not decisions of longevity. You feel like they're long, long term, but the difference between God's long term and your long term is quite different. You may say five year decision. Is that long for you? Sure. Because that's, you know, 2025, whatever. But that is very short term. Constant disappointment. As soon as conflict hits, you break camp. Or you take in too much conflict. You become abusive to yourself. Because without purpose and understanding where you're at and what's, what the struggle is, you start to consume some things that you would have never consumed before. But you feel like it's just a mode of operation. That's just how the world is. And you, and, you, and you take it in for what it is. And again, you start to become the consumer of those things. You start to question yourself. You start to doubt. You start to have a, what's called a flesh dependency. Whenever you have a hole in your heart, and this is again, and we'll get into the latter shows, and we'll, so I'll just keep it there. Whenever you have a hole in your heart, it's not like you just have one. The enemy has a way of creating multiple holes so you don't realize which hole that you're dealing with. Okay? But this one in particular is called lack of purpose, no purpose. Okay? So, flesh dependency. Whenever you have that, you have to find strength somewhere. Because this gape and filling will cause something and keep you in a your direction that you're not trying to go. So the flesh has a way of making things happen for you, saying that you're still safe. That's where us, and you say, man, that person's pretty, pretty prideful. The flesh is, is operating for that person. It's sustaining their, their viewpoint. So that way they don't go completely to the, to the deep end. So this feeling of doubt, is this, is this a feeling that we should have? No. But when you're not on purpose and you don't feel like you have a purpose, well, then the feeling of doubt becomes a very known reality. You feel like there's no hope. <clears throat> Your decision making will be under attack all the time. That's where you start to feel that depression. That's where you start to feel anger and resentment. It's very easy to have those feelings when you have, when you're under this attack of not feeling your purpose. You feel like everybody's out to get you, and this is a feeling that starts to amplify in your life. You have the language of no purpose. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? So if life and death are in the power of the tongue, how would I start speaking, I have no purpose? Well, it doesn't matter. <sighs> you know, yeah, everything just seems to fail in my life. Is that, is that a spe is that speech of hope? No, the, speak, the speech is coming from the root of where it's originated from, which is not feeling that purpose. And so this becomes your mo, this becomes your trail. You're speaking death. Romans 8, 6 says, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So with that life and peace, 
or I'm sorry, with that death, with your mind governed by the flesh is death. The amplification of no purpose starts to become this. If your mind and your, if your mind is governed by the flesh and you have the feeling of no doubt, if the flesh is saying you, there, you have no, you know, I don't feel right. <clears throat> if I have that feeling of doubt, my paradigm, the way that I see life comes through this lens of how I'm feeling and where my mind is governed by. That means there's something absent within my heart. So I have to depend on what my mind is thinking. And if it's governed, because the mind is never by itself, if it's, gov if it's governed by the flesh, then my paradigm becomes that. So this becomes your world. In the flesh, you will find everything temporary. You will constantly look for temporary because that's the, the thing that's getting you through. Because if you're operating through a temporary vehicle, which is your flesh, you're going to constantly find temporary, I temporary items. I hope I'm shaping the, the picture for you right now. This is a real integral, deep conversation. Now, Maurice, you can make anything deep in a real serious conversation. Is it because you're talking? No. It's because you have people around you. How does this involve me as a business owner? How does this involve me as an employee? Do you know if I have this no purpose feeling and I bring it into your office as an employee, I'm the most dangerous thing to your office right now? Have you ever thought about it from that way? If I'm an employer and I'm operating under no purpose and I'm operating under a different mindset, don't you know I have the most dangerous company out there right now? I want you to, to really let that sink. Because in our next show, we're going to talk about how this actually shows up in your office space. Okay, I wanted to create framework for how us, how we operate individually. But seriously, when it comes to your business, when you're talking about the, some of the, where the dysfunction is coming from, this no purpose actually starts to erode the office space because you see a constant pressure of it. I want to make sure that you tune in. Make sure that you're tuned in to next week's show because, again, we're going to dig into how the space and this is. If you want to save your office space, you want to save your sanity, this is the show that you want to watch. Please make sure that you watch this on Facebook Live and also on YouTube to keep the conversation going. If you have any comments, please let me know. But in the meantime, I actually have to get back to work. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.